I'm going to spend some time today training on how to walk and turn with the Kasari Gama, with its Kasari Fundo, swinging while not smacking yourself. And while not cutting yourself with the razor sharp sickle or comma. Also while not getting the chain caught up in the blade. It's a complicated weapon, guys. And here's a turn. And we'll break that down here in detail, but I learned that from the Empire Dojo YouTube channel and that creator's Kasarigama video. And keep in mind, that was by a professional martial artist, meaning he owns his own dojo, apparently. And he's making a video, a good video, teaching this technique with a safe version of the Kasarigama and hits himself. And I have absolutely done the same, which is why you see me taking this nice and easy as I swing basically my body length's worth of chain with a steel weight on the end. So let's cover the basic and then get into the variations that I created. And so notice, walking forwards, spinning backwards. Turn. Now, walking forwards, spinning forwards. Here I'll go slower and let out a lot of chain. So here's the key to this. When I'm spinning forward, I'm going to strike 45 degree downward. That naturally leaves me spinning backwards. And when I go to turn from that, I strike upwards 45 degrees. And now I naturally end up spinning forwards. Here's the first variation I came up with. Do your turn, but continue moving in that same direction by walking backwards. And there it is again, instead of just pivoting on the spot, like here. And now let's do a detailed look at these 45 degree swings and turns that I was talking about. So I'll wrap this up. And you'll see it's the classic 45 degree downward swing. It's just that my whole body follows along with it right there. And that's how you end up swinging backwards. Now for the opposite, you're swinging backwards as you walk forward. You swing 45 degrees up and follow the chain with your body as you turn and you'll naturally end up there, spinning down. And here's my next variation to the basic and it's definitely more challenging than the walking backwards after turning. We're going to eliminate all of the walking. So I'm swinging backwards and up, forwards and down, backwards and up, forwards and down, etc, etc. And this way you eliminate the mental prep time that you get when you're walking. Okay, here it comes. I'm going to get ready for the turn. No, you're just doing turn after turn after turn. Much easier to make a mistake. And while I felt pretty confident in doing that with my right hand, I'm definitely feeling less sure of myself here with the left hand. I don't know if you can tell, but I definitely felt like there was a danger of smacking my own shin on the downward strike and turn. And back to the right hand where I was getting pretty confident. And this is my top speed that I achieved. But as soon as you start getting overconfident in this weapon, that is when you will whack yourself. And so after a few of those, I thought it'd be a good idea to wind it down. And now let's get to another variation on turning. This time, we're going to take the basic and transition into an overhead swing. And it works like a charm when starting when turning with the 45 degree downward swing. And here's where you have to be careful, especially if you're trying something new. I thought, well, what if I try the 45 degree up swing as I turn? Nope. Horizontal swing to 45 degree upward while turning. Bad idea. So instead, how about this? The technique that I just showed, then I'm walking forward, swinging overhead. And what if from there, I strike downwards and upwards as I turn? And there we go. I'm in a backwards vertical spin. So that works. And while I work that a little bit, let me say, the thing is, there's just so many combinations, right? Well, what if I try this same variation I'm doing right now, but transition straight into an overhead? And I've been pivoting on my left foot every time, turning around that way. What if I try turning around in the other direction over my right shoulder? What if I turn around and want to transition into an infinity pattern instead of just a spin on one side of my body or over my head? And what if you add the turn slash walking backwards to any of that. So you can see it's not a weapon you're going to get bored with. For instance, here I'm walking forward with an infinity pattern, and then I turn in the way that I already know how. But remember, even the very basic pattern requires two different strikes turns, the downward one and the upward one. Since I'm doing an infinity pattern, this has to be with the downward version. I'm not going to bother experimenting with an upwards infinity pattern and turn around because walking forwards with the upward infinity swing, that doesn't seem realistic. But that's yet another natural variation. Here I'm going to turn around after doing the backwards swing and then transition into the downward infinity. So you get the point. I mean, it's kind of like dancing where you can just kind of mix and match moves as makes sense. And there's a really legitimate question. Is any of this needed at all? In a real fight, would you want to turn around in a much simpler way, the simplest way possible? Well, probably. One version of doing that might be this right here. 
See that? Just to turn around in the most natural way, no pirouetting, no cross-stepping, nothing, and then transition into whatever you want. And so I like this exercise, the basic one that we started with that I picked up online, but you know, you definitely want to question everything. Is that something people came up with just because they were bored? I mean, a long time ago, not recently, in a dojo. That does happen in martial arts. It has happened a lot in martial arts history as combatives kind of stopped being an actual prime function. We'll look at the evolution that led to wushu being like a basically demonstration only art. And notice coming up right here, I almost hit myself. And a second time. So why not just do this and avoid that danger altogether? And a transition to a fully facing your opponent when you're ready. So let's try that again. Granted, this is not the best ready position here, but your opponent's still got to worry about that chain, and then you can switch. And primarily, this was a dueling weapon anyway, so would you ever have to turn around like that? Here it is with speed, the move I was coming up with. Oh well, that's enough. My arms were beat. Remember, this is not a feather light pseudo version, you know, demonstration quote-unquote weapon. And see you next time.